We'll start that and see how Charlie already did that. The only thing you can do, the light switch is on the wall by the door. The only thing you can do is turn them all off. Charlie already went through all of those. We don't need you doing it again. Yeah. Especially when we get moved at the last minute. That's one of the reasons we've stayed here is because that's the cheapest we've seen from anywhere. Should be well. Are they just doing the asbestos, or are they redoing the seats? <laughs> doing the seats? Oh, that's probably so they don't have to vacuum asbestos out of all the seats, all the dust. All right. The only danger I need not Linda. Do you still have that cable with you? I will take it now so I can keep my phone charged while I'm using it for internet. <laughs> yeah. All right. I was going to try to remember to do that like us on Facebook, but then they didn't like ourselves next time. Yeah, if someone wants to log into Facebook and like us. And um, I think, no, you can like this, well, no, you can thumbs up the stream on YouTube. So right now we are broadcasting on YouTube. Um, if you go to our main page, applesider.org, uh, there's a link to the YouTube stream. Um, if I do this now, it's going to stream the stream of 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 the stream. <laughs> how, many, how many regressions can you get? So there's a live now. Um, actually, if I do this in a different window, it won't go out over the projector. And then we can thumbs up it, and then uh, on our Facebook page, we can say we're streaming now. All right, well, we apologize for the uh, confusion as we're trying to get everything back up and working together. on our live stream. Yep, and I can do a thumbs up. Yay. Although it's, um, if you thumbs up your own video, that's a little uh, marginal. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah, you're self-confident. That's a good, you're self-confident. You're not uh, trying to uh, game the system.
Alright. So I'm going to post on Facebook that we're live on YouTube. You could, uh... Um... You can also go live on... Um... Facebook, but we haven't set that up yet because it was easier to go live on uh, on YouTube to feed in our multi-camera shoot. Although tonight we've only got one camera. Did I just lose my link? I just lost my link. We'll go back to here. All right, so I need to copy the link so I can put it on YouTube. Share. Facebook page. I'm going to go to public and paste the link. And share. Alrighty. Um, shall we start? Oh, 7.30. Shall we start with news? Or Bob, do you just want to jump right in? Okay. talked about the new phones last month, right? That came out last month. Anyone get one of the new phones yet? Oh yeah? Which one did you get? Yeah, there's the 10S, the 10S Max, and the 10R, just to mess everybody up. Yeah, the 10S. Yeah, all the iPhone 10s can do, uh, to, can do animated emoji. And the new feature now is to do a Memoji. So you can put your own, you can build your own uh, face uh, in the Memoji. It's, and it's tough when you forget your password because in order to change your password, you need to know your password. Um, and, and so generally then you call the company and you have to prove it's you somehow. Security questions, an email link. Um, because there have been a lot of cases where people have called up and, uh, Hi, I'm, I'm Bill and I can't remember my password. And it, it gets changed. Part of it is that you've, you've been getting your voicemail all along, so you must be putting in your, your passcode. That's... It's... No, yeah. So it doesn't always ask you, but it should ask now and then to prove it's still you. That's part of the problem with the computers remembering passcodes for you, which is convenient. But then when you do need to type them in, you don't remember them and can't type them in. So one of the new features on the uh, on the iPhone 10 um, was Animoji um, for animated emojis, and then in um, iOS 12 they added the Memoji, so you can build a um, cartoon character of yourself, uh, and you've got different skin tones and facial hair and eyewear and headwear, and um, you can build whatever sort of avatar you want. You can make it look just like you, or you can make it look, um, you know, outlandish if you want it to. S spiky purple hair if you want.
Yeah, Apple's website has has um, tutorials and help on how to how to do the new features. No, don't copy my phone. Um, and then um, one of the things people often don't remember is in the uh, Apple Books program. Um, yeah, it used to be called iBooks. They have renamed it Apple Books. Uh, you can get um, electronic manuals for all of Apple's uh, uh, devices. And I need to change my window now here to be a screen. Uh, no, 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 cancel. I did that wrong. Yeah, Safari Apple Users Group window. And I want to turn off the window and turn on the screen. Where's the screen capture? Great, it's gone. Display capture. Okay, there's the display. That's the problem with the display capture is it captures everything in the display. Um, so in the iBook store, you can do this on the computer, the iPhone, or the iPad. Um, there is a section called Apple Users Guides. And in there, you can get, in essence, the, uh, um, the electronic book for all the different uh, devices for the phone, the pad, the computers. Each computer um, has its own model. Each iPad has its own model. And they, they uh, update themselves for each new OS. So now we've got iPhone user's guide for iOS 12. So you can download it, read it on your computer, your phone, your iPad. And these are all free from Apple. Um, this is the uh, what used to be the printed manual you got. Uh, a lot of companies have stopped including printed manuals because they want to be environmentally friendly and not waste the paper. Um, and it's also cheaper not to include a printed manual. So you can download the manuals. What's, what's nice about the manual uh, often is the um, uh, search. You can, you can um, uh, search for anything in the uh, book rather than just the regular index, because you've got a, um, a search command. And let me search for HDMI, because that was my problem today. I don't have an HDMI adapter. Huh, and there is no, uh, no text for HDMI. So do touch ID. And now, so you don't have to rely on what the book indexed. You can search across the entire book, because it's an electronic book. Right, so I couldn't find HDMI as a search, so it isn't in there anywhere under HDMI. It's probably under Video Out. So that's in the iBook store under Apple Users Guides. Yeah, you can make the text bigger. So if I go back to my library, especially if you're on a, um, um, a phone, um, so there's a little double A up here, so I can make the text bigger and smaller. Um, you can change the background. Um, you can even invert it. So at night, I have my, uh, my uh, iPad set to invert at night, so I get white letters on a black background so the text isn't so blinding. So you can make the text as big as you want to, um, to, to see what you're doing. Although, if it gets too big, then you... Uh, now it's, only, it's cut itself down to one column per page, because I have the text too big. If I make it just a hair smaller, now we're back to two columns per page. So that's a, it's a nice thing in the book program that a lot of people don't um, uh, uh, remember is there. And it will synchronize across all your devices through iCloud, so it will pick up what pages you, you left off with on your other device. So you can start reading on your phone, pick up later on your tablet, and it uh, picks up at the same page number uh, that you left. Yeah, you can go to uh, a sepia tone so you don't get all white, which might be able to save a little battery life, too, because it's not doing bright white pixels. So if you are on a phone or, or a tablet, um, then, uh, then it's nicer to uh, uh, save your battery. Um, yes, on the iPad, uh, you might even be able to do it in, oops, in the computer. Um, in the um, uh, preferences, there is a um, thing called Night Shift. So that, uh, no, that, not quite. That adjusts the entire screen. So um, 
there's been some research and some anecdotal evidence that the bright blue light um, wakes you up. That's why you wake up in the morning with the lights, uh, uh, sunlight coming in. Uh, so this new feature called Night Shift, they added a version or two ago, will automatically move the, the color temperature. You're not going to see it on the, on the, well, you might see it on the projector. Did, it, did the projector change as I go warmer? So my screen is getting yellower as it removes the blue. Yeah, the, the projector's not doing it. And you can schedule that um, custom or sunrise to sunset. And there is a setting in the uh, book program. Let me see if it's in the book program on the computer, too. To automatically shift at, uh, at night. Let's do advanced. What's in the advanced menu? Nope. But on the iPad, there is a, um, an option to automatically shift at night to um, black on white versus white on black. And of course, I'm not going to find it immediately. I wonder if it just does it when you have a book open. Yeah. Well, on the uh, on the computer, yes, you can you can schedule it at a certain time, um, or you can schedule it uh, have it automatic go from sunrise to sunset. Um, on the iPad, it does look like oh, I don't have I don't have any books downloaded. Has anyone figured out? Oh, this one is downloaded. Um, yes, I know I'm offline. Just open the stupid book. Yeah. Um, one thing I have noticed on my iPad, and there's a setting to offload un, uh, 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 le uh, unused apps. So if you don't use an app for a while, it removes it from your iPad. So you can you download it again later if you need to. Um, the, the book program does that. But it removes a book I'm reading now. I was reading it last night, and I go tonight to try to read it again. It's already removed it, and i got to download it again, which is very frustrating. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be you know it's something you haven't used in a while. So I would I would have said a week or a month, but it's doing it you know like almost daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used it yesterday, so leave it here. I'm probably going to use it today. It, sh it should be at least a week. The other problem I ran into is is I've got a um, um, first person view camera that I put on my rockets and, and uh, planes. And um, over the winter, we weren't flying. And so the iPad removed that app because I wasn't using it for a while. Now the app doesn't exist anymore. They've discontinued it, and I can't download it again. I still have it on my phone, which is handy. <laughs> so I can still use that camera. Uh, but I, I can't get it on my iPad because it can't be downloaded again. <coughs> no, um, they, they don't. Well, yes, they would exist in a backup. I'd have to erase my iPad and restore from the backup from last year to get it back. Nope. Um, and applications aren't actually, now that I think about it, applications are not backed up. Your list of applications is backed up. So when you restore your iPad from backup, it re-downloads all the applications. So that makes the backup smaller because it doesn't have to back up each and, each and every app. But this app doesn't exist in the store anymore, so it can't download it. Yeah, there are there oldsoftware.com. Um, I haven't seen any 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 page like that for iOS apps um, because they were all hosted by Apple. They were never hosted by the the publishers. And the problem is they may not be compatib compatible with the current OS. I can probably find a way to sideload it to pull it off my phone. There's third-party utilities that will let you look at your phone as a hard drive and, and pull anything you want off. 
Um, usually they're designed for emergency back, uh, emergency backup and recovery. So if your if your phone won't boot, you can mount it as a disk and copy your files off that you didn't back up. So I can probably figure out a way to copy the app from my phone to the computer to the iPad if I really set my mind to it. But so far it hasn't been an issue. It's it's, it's almost easier on the phone because it's easier to carry when I go out to the field and hit the button to to launch it. And then the app launches and I can control it from the phone. Alrighty, we got a little <laughs> sidetracked as we usually do. Um, all right, what other, any other news people uh, had seen recently? There was a remake of this movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio recently, too, in the last few years. Yeah, with Tony Curtis, yeah, 61. A lot of times the movies take dramatic license and make things worse than they were. There have been, oops, I just typed that wrong. There's been a lot of, of work and consternation <laughs> with um, uh, passwords that, let me see if I can uh, find what you're looking for. Safe checks? No. Um, yeah. Yeah. Passwordless multi-factor login identity solution. So one one of the, one of the things that's happened recently is many banks and um, well, pretty much everything these days have started talking about two-factor authentication. So you've got your username and password. You have to remember your password all the time, um, and people forget. Your username is almost always your email address, and that gets made public so easily that it's not very good as a credential to log in. Um, a lot of people change their email address when they start getting too much spam because their email address gets, uh, gets uh, caught up in all the spammers. And two-factor authentication in the beginning was a text message sent to your phone because everyone has text messaging on their phone just about. Text messaging, text messaging is not secure and it's easy to spoof a phone number. 
um, and get someone else's texts. There was a big breach a couple of weeks ago at Reddit. Um, uh, someone got into the Reddit administration console by spoofing uh, a text message um, a phone number. So they got the two-factor code uh, for the administrator and um, were able to log in. Um, Apple two-factor authentication uses the iMessaging system that is secure rather than uh, text messaging, which is not. So Apple is really pushing people to turn on two-factor authentication, especially if you if you upgrade to OS 12, um, uh, iOS 12 or Mac OS 10.14, uh, they really want you to turn on two-factor so that whenever you log into a new device, it sends a code uh, to your phone to prove it's really you logging in. So in addition to username and password, you also need um, a previously registered device. So that's supposed to make it much harder for a bad guy to get into your account. Um, Google has been using text messaging. Uh, they have recently announced that they're going to um, shift over to um, an authenticator app. So instead of using an insecure text message, they're going to use a more secure um, authentication program. But that's, that's more work for the user because now you have to download the authenticator app and, and confirm your identity to it. And so there are um, systems for using biometrics. So Apple is now using Face ID. They went through a, a fingerprint ID. Uh, there's another system being used, uh, being developed called Squirrel, uh, that uses a, a QR code. And one of the problems we have seen is you may have a very good password, but if the other end loses your secret, you have no recourse. Basically, you're screwed. So in all the data breaches we've seen, you know, Home Depot and Target and Equifax, uh, passwords are being lost by the other end. So it's nothing you did wrong. You, you know, you had a good password yourself. It's lost at the other end. So, <coughs> so uh, with Squirrel using Q, uh, QR codes, the other end doesn't have any secrets to lose. Um, the authentication is all done on your phone with an app. Uh, and right now they have iOS, Android, and I think they're working on a Windows phone app as well. So that instead of needing to type in a username and password, you use your squirrel identity. It does mean that the other end has to add support for squirrel, um, but they're hoping it's going to catch on because it doesn't require much maintenance. Um, there is no password for, for them to lose, no password for you to reset at their end. So there's, there's less after, um, uh, uh, after login help. So they don't have a password of yours they're saving, so they can't reset it for you. Everything is done with the Squirrel uh, account on your phone um, or your computer or uh, um, other, uh, other iPad, uh, tablet, other, uh, other device. So a lot of people are trying to work out some way to eliminate username and, pa username and passwords uh, because that is one of the weakest le links now in uh, securing your identity. And uh, with so much online shopping, relying on a username and password, if someone gets your password, then, um, then you're, uh, you're screwed. Uh, we've talked in the past about the website, Have I Been Pwned? You can put in your email address, if you, f if you spell your email address right. I don't think my Apple address, yeah, my Apple address hasn't been caught yet, but my uh, company address has. Because you use the same email address for pretty much everything you log into, um, if a company gets breached, now your email address is associated with that breach. Um, so beginning, uh, and then at the website, they, uh, they tell you where your email ad address was lost. Now, most of the time, so Adobe lost encrypted passwords, but the hint was in plain text. So when the, when the, the researchers were looking through this, uh, the database of, of, of 153 million passwords, most people's hints were so easy that they could guess the password. Um, and it was, you know, favorite sports team. And so people just started typing in, you know, Bills, Cowboys, Yankees, until they got in. Or, um, uh, you know, President or something like that. And so it was the hints, hints being in plain text made it too easy to, uh, to guess the password. 
Uh, and the other thing that's neat is, is the spammers will break into each other. Um, so your uh, uh, email address gets gets uh, put on a spam list. Another spammer will break into the first one and get that email list. Yep. Oh, crap. It should be. Oh, I see what's happened. The, the screen image is too big. So that that window is too big. There's actually two um, two halves of it. There's the Amazon Smile nonprofit link, and then there's the Apple Cider referral link. So the the uh, the shopping link we have on our website, um, that link icon has both the Smile and the referral link. In fact, the first time you go to smile.amazon.com, you'll have to set up your uh, preferred charity. We would like if you prefer us. <laughs> And uh, one of the neat things is when you do go, and let's see, am I logged in as me? Yeah. So it says I'm supporting Apple Cider, and, and I have generated $4.88 in revenue for Apple Cider with the things that I personally have bought. Yeah, Christmas time uh, coming up, you know, buy your stuff on Amazon, use the Smile link. And uh, and then we get a we get a kickback, it's half a percent or something like that. Thank you. Commission, yes, not a kickback. Kickbacks are illegal. Commissions are <laughs> referral fee. <laughs> uh, in fact, Apple. Uh, that's that's some news. Apple um, is uh, people are mad at Apple for. Um, uh, they are reducing and eliminating iTunes referral fees on many um, items. So what a lot of app developers would do is, and reviewers too, when they review an app, they have a link for you to download the app and they put in their referral code. So just like our Amazon code, if you buy something from Amazon, we get a commission. If you buy something from iTunes using that referral code, um, the developer, the magazine, et cetera, gets a commission. Um, uh, I was uh, um, listening to a podcast with Renee Ritchie from iMore, and they basically, they were paying the salary of the reviewer from the referral fees. And now that Apple is um, um, ending some of the fees and they have lowered the referral percentage of, of most of a lot of the other uh, items, um, they now have to budget more for that person or they have to, they have to fire the reviewer and not do reviews. And so a lot of small app developers were using the referral fees as, as an additional income. Uh, it's, it's hard when you sell an app to think Apple's going to take 30%. Um, but if you sold it at Walmart, they'd take 90%. <laughs> Uh, and they'd tell you what you had to sell your uh, your app for. So Apple takes 30% of the sale. Uh, so some people were getting that 3 or 4% back by using referral keys. And uh, Apple is um, changing that now. And that's, so that's happening. Uh, and act yeah. So and, and that's that's the biggest criticism is that Apple, you know, they're a trillion dollar company. They've got hundreds of billions of dollars in cash. Um, they really need that, you know, three percent that they're cutting out. But what's interesting is when you look at uh, Apple's quarterly earnings, the services section is now dramatically higher. You know, multi-billion dollars a, a quarter in services, 
which is the app stores, uh, the music store, um, Apple, um, Apple Music. Had you heard that yet, Rick? They're cutting out their referral fees. So that tiny check you get every month or two, you're going to stop getting <laughs> for the, app, the apps that you sell. So what is it, effective? Um, so app store downloads are canceling. Um, there's some, there, a couple of things are staying. Let me see if uh, what we can find what's staying. So iOS and Mac apps will be removed. So music, books, t um, movies, and TV show referrals will stay, but app referrals are being eliminated, which is, uh, oop, which is very frustrating for a lot of people. Um, and the, and yeah, the wording of it, you know, commission will be removed, and and, and it came out like the day after uh, Apple stock broke the trillion dollar market cap. So it was it was pretty bad timing, but yeah, Barb's got the right idea. Yeah. They have so much money, they're they're pulling back that little bit more from other people. So, so yeah, last year they dropped it from 7% to 2.5%. And so a lot of people were worried that it was going to drop again, and you have to come up with different marketing plans. Four or five minutes ago? Um, well, let me see what my feed shows. Thank you. dashboard and see yep yeah I did I switched it from from uh, screen to window yeah well now the w now the windows windows too big because it's I'm cutting some of it off let me make it a little smaller so it doesn't get cut off behind me. All right. Alrighty, should we do some questions or do you want to do your... Um okay. Yeah, why don't you come up by the mic and let me get a camera set to you. No video? Okay. You want to log into your um, Ring account so we can see your, your door? No, <laughs> <laughs> uh. They don't work. Yeah, the glass and the digitizer are 
fused together with the LCD panel, so if they replace just one, it's very hard to not break one of the other two. So Apple does a, a complete display assembly replacement. You want to put the mic? Yeah. You can between your legs, maybe, or off to the side? <laughs> Straddle it a couple of times, but you can hear me now? Yep. All right, now i got to get the uh, camera pointed at you. Yes. i got to turn this. Yep. Yeah, you just got to get close to it. Yeah, you get top. Yeah. I know some rock and rollers, they, they get uh, electric snaps on their teeth because they get so close and they're spitting into it. And you know, a lot of times they get s little semi-electrocutions as they sing. There's a small price to pay for being rich and famous. Okay, I'll start now. Yeah. My doorbell went bad, kind of like my phone. And uh, I, it just makes sense to get a ring doorbell or something like that. You know, I see the ads, you know, burglars come to your front door and you scare them off, you know, booga booga, and they run away. And you got them on video, and, which is saved, and that's all well and good. So I finally took the sign off my front door saying, knock loud, and uh, I went and got a ring doorbell. So installation was quite easy, as they say. I had to download an app, which you all know that, but you know I had to figure it out. Download the Ring app, and that set me up to, uh, you know, hook up the Ring to my internet. You know, uh, you have to do a few this and that check boxes and so on, and get it, and then you have to set up your chime, which is separate from the doorbell, that plugs in in the living room or wherever you want. Yeah, the ring itself will ring your phone. If you want an actual chime in your house, that's a second box. Yeah, and, and that comes in the package for $200. For $200, I got the, the ring doorbell, and it's got two uh, bezels on it, a silver one and a black one, so you can you know, design for your house, whatever looks best for you. And uh, a battery, which is a pretty substantial chunk of uh, uh, nickel cadmium or whatever it is anyway. And you have to, you also get a little charger and uh, it's just like charging a phone. You charge up the, the battery. This is, I'll talk about this in a minute, but this is my biggest uh, complaint about the whole thing. So anyway, you also have the app on, can have it on your computer. So for the most part, I'm sitting at my computer and I hear a little uh, jingle, you know, a chime. And I know there's, I'll see a little window will open up on my computer, uh, motion at the front door. And if it was a bad guy, I could, I can press the buttons and uh, talk to them, but I've never actually stood outside and heard anybody talk to me, so I don't know what how it sounds or if it sounds at all. But uh, anyway, it, for me it works. It, it jingles when there's motion at the front door, and I see a little video. Sometimes it's Carol just bending over to get the email, and we get a butt shot, and uh, which I'm sure she doesn't want that saved. It is saved, and it's saved because I pay after the initial... Uh, you know, time period where you get it free. I pay three dollars a month uh, for them to save the video. I think they save it for I don't know six months or something like that. But they do that on an ongoing basis. So if you ever have to go back and you know check a specific video on a certain date, the video is there. You know, uh, 
and you can catch that child molester or whoever the squirrel that was at your front door. And um, this is a good. They post videos to their Twitter feed. See, this, this was the neighborhood watch coming around, two, two kids in a little pedal car. Okay, let's see. Uh, there were other options besides uh, Ring. You know, there's a thing called Nest, and I think there's Bing and iHome or stuff like this. And, you know, I short-circuited all that research to see which is the better, figuring it's going to be a, a lot of work and a small difference between one and the other, so I just got Ring. Uh, the bundle, like I said, costs 200 bucks at BJ's, and you can buy it pretty much everywhere. Uh, I got the doorbell unit battery, charging cable, the chime, and then I had to download the app. Okay, experience setup was easy, like I say, and I already talked about that stuff. We haven't downloaded the app to her phone, but it can be uh, keyed to more than one phone, so she could get it. And the nice thing is uh, when we go to Florida, uh, we can see our front door and when somebody's at the, the door as long as we're hooked up to the Internet. And uh, Yeah, that's one of their slogans, you're always home. So one of the things they, they find is that thieves will often knock on the door or you know peer in the windows to see if somebody's home before they go around back and break in. Your ring will go off, you can see them, you can talk to them and say, you know, hi, what do you want? Or... I'm putting the baby down. I'll be right out. Yeah, you lie and pretend you're home. Yep. That's part of their ad. You know, uh, I'm doing this in the house when really you're in the next county. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah. No, it, we decided because the 20th there's a conflict, right? This yeah. Is the month. Although so it's this coming Saturday. This Saturday I have a conflict, but I'm going to come anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can, and we'll stand in the den and look at you, maybe talk to you. But, uh, yeah, that's 1 o'clock uh, Saturday if anybody wants to come by. The address is on the website. And uh, originally that was set up to be 1 o'clock to... 2.30, we would have these little meetings, and it isn't necessarily Green Apples, but it's hands-on and closer interaction rather than up here and out there. You know, we're all sitting around, I got internet, and I've got uh, computers, and bring your own computers, and we can do stuff. Uh, but the idea would be from one after lunch, so I'm not serving lunch, uh, to 2.30, and then it's only five minutes over to uh, the JCC, but now we're going to join the JCC meeting at my house at 3 o'clock. How many people are familiar with the JCC facilities? Because that was one of the places we were looking at, but the, from the parking lot into the meeting rooms is a little bit more of a walk. Yeah. Not really, no. But anyway, the JCC is 10 minutes from my house, but uh, you, know, you don't even have to think about yeah, it. Yeah, he lives near 12 corners, so it's pretty easy to get to. Now, the battery. This is the thing that bothered me the most with this. It's supposed to be a year-long battery <laughs> that should last at least six months before you have to charge it again. Mine lasts about uh, two weeks. We have seen at our store, if you never look at the video, the battery lasts, you know, quite a while. Well, video, but if you want to look at the video, then, yeah. Video comes up on my computer automatically. I don't even have to respond to it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there, so, you know, maybe. But I've recharged it like three times. Actually, charging it is pretty easy. But when you put the battery in... Click it up in, and then you put the bezel back on and screw the one screw in. Give you a special screwdriver for it. 
because it's not a Phillips and it's not a Torx. It's yeah, it's, it's so the bad guy doesn't come up and pull the doorbell off. So if they, it, trying to even cover the camera, he's already been hit by the motion detector before right. he, before they get up to the doorbell. So it doesn't matter yeah, if he covers a, it or not. Wide range. You know, we get our neighbor putting his things in his driveway in his car. Uh, I think it's 160 degree range or something like that. So that that's all well and good, but the battery has been a problem. So what I do is leave the screw off, and then every other week I'll take the battery out, charge it overnight, and put it back in for another two weeks. But no. I can hardwire it. Yeah, if you're replacing an existing doorbell, use those wires to power it. I would have to run some wiring, and you can also use a transducer and uh, not not a regular hardwiring like you might do for a regular doorbell, but I don't know. Uh, anyway, there's alternative ways of wiring it, and uh, you know I'll probably do that eventually. But yes, yes. See, on the app, it will tell me uh, what the current battery condition is. You know, it's low, just like you get on your uh, iPhone. And so I, I know the battery is low. And they also sell um, floodlight cameras and what they call the stick-up cam. So you can put cameras around your house. So here's a video of someone trying to break in the back door at night. Okay. So that, it ha that was my closer here, the security. Oh, sorry. No, it's just uh, they have another kit that's $200. And I know you raised your hand. But uh, the other kit has a keypad. It has floodlights and uh Securities. They, it also has at least one uh, magnetic contact you'd put on a sliding door, so if it's broached, then uh, so on. That that's another two hundred dollars. I'm not reporting on that; just that it exists. Yes. Yeah. It's it's it looks like a big uh, chunky bar. You know, it's about. The width of it, uh, two inches by four inches by an inch, at least an inch front to back. And yeah, it's a substantial battery. I mean, you could always use it to defend yourself by throwing it at somebody, but it's it's heavy. It's like the uh, size of a D battery, maybe. You know, with you know. It's different shape but about that size and uh, I'm satisfied with it because I don't have the knock on my door paper on the door any longer so I don't have to worry that I'm downstairs or and don't hear it right yeah the that charge is pretty fast too it, probably it'd probably be expensive a and it's so easy to just pull the bezel off, take the battery out, plug it in overnight, put it back in, put the bezel back on. You know, that, that's an easy process. So having a second battery, you know, would cost money and wouldn't be that much of a benefit. They also have um, solar panels. So you could rig up a solar panel to keep it uh, charged too. Good idea. Well, I won't be home, so I don't care <laughs> if people ring the bell. But, but uh, yeah, the, for, yeah, for the burglar I'll aspect. i before I go. We'll be gone. Uh, three weeks is usually what we do in February. So it might hold it. If I charge it up just before I go, yeah, I might be able to, you know, see my front door occasionally from Florida or Charleston or wherever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for 50 bucks, you can get the solar charger. Although, if your front door is uh, shaded, it may not generate enough. Actually, we have a nice shady front door. Uh, sun comes up, you know. So then you get, yeah, you get the solar panel on the wire. Way, and then it arcs across the south, but we got, uh, you know, maple trees. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm retired. I don't work. <laughs> um, one of the um, 
one of the things we've also started seeing is that the burglars and criminals know about the ring doorbell, um, and then and they the ring has posted a few about would-be thieves walking up to a front porch. Oh, there's a ring doorbell. Let's get out of here. So it doesn't even have to be running, just a faceplate. We used to joke the best-selling home alarm system was a sign that said home alarm system. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even need to have the system, just the sign saying you need had the system was enough. And then they go to the house next door where there isn't a sign. Or toy cameras that look like cameras yep. from up there. Yeah. <laughs> Make your own 3D printer kit, yeah. I'm going to be leaving early today because I got to go home and watch the United States women's soccer team qualifying for the World Cup. They already did. They've won two, and this one, win or lose, they still qualify. But uh, I like to watch them. Most of those uh, women on the U.S. women's soccer team, which is the best women's soccer team in the world, were previously on the Rochester Flash. We had there it is. the Go best sign. women's soccer team in the freaking world. And we lost it because people simply would not turn out. And they left, and now they're in North Carolina, where they continue to be. They've won the championship every year. This year they were 21-1-4. They only lost one game all year. The, this team is so awesome, and we lost it. And if you love soccer like I do, it's, it's hard heartbreaking but uh, anyway who knows yeah yeah I'm sure it is you know yeah I can talk more about that after the break or and, and or but we can do it now if you want the, yeah in the the video with uh, Frank Abagnale, he makes a comment about how uh, refrigerators and toasters have gotten along, you know, fabulously already. They don't need to talk to each other, but uh, every device is smart and getting smarter and uh, talking to each other. But how necessary, you know, who knows? I stumbled across that video, but I, I liked it well enough to watch it twice, and I recommend it to you. <laughs> There's a sci-fi show, Red Dwarf, and, and they have an um, uh, intelligent talking toaster, and always asking uh, if anyone would like toast or muffins or bread or anything, and no one ever does. And the toaster gets mad, so why would anyone buy an intelligent talking toaster if they don't want toast? <laughs> that last bit of nostalgia, you know, we really don't have screen savers anymore. We have desktops, but I really miss flying toasters. It's still around. Flying toasters. Yeah. Apparently, there's a band called the Flying Toasters now too. Dog that ran around on your screen and yep. took a dump and chewed up stuff. He would chew up the app icons. Yeah. I like that one. Oscar the Grouch would pop up out of the trash can, eat your trash. Apparently they didn't ask the Children's Television Workshop to use the character Oscar. <laughs> yeah, but After Dark was a screensaver where flying toasters would um, fly across your screen. There's videos of it I, that I, I found now, but there there is a screensaver you can download that still has it. So we still, they don't save the screen anymore, now it's screen entertainment. I don't think they ever really We've seen burn -in, we've seen burn-ins on CRTs. Burn-ins on LCDs are a lot less common, but we've got we've got a lot of old CRTs that we pulled out of um, offices, and Apple File Edit is burned into every single one of them because every single program is Apple File Edit. So you turn off the screen, and there's Apple File Edit. You can see. Okay. Well, I'll see some of you on Saturday, and the rest of you next month. All right. And remember to bring up that security issue again after the break. 
Um, it's a good time to take. We'll take about a 10, 15 minute break. We've got refreshments out front. Uh, I can take any um, uh, dues anyone wants to, uh, to renew. Uh, I can check um, um, expiration dates if you need me to. And uh, we'll reconvene back here in about 10, 15 minutes. Anyone have change for uh, 20? Maybe. All right. We will I'll make a note of it here. All right. How do I zoom the window when I can't see the window? Okay. And I will take two of them. 20, 30. All right, uh, let me make a note here that Ed paid. And Cider. What is today? 10 10. 10 10 18. That's when I expire. That's today. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but I, as soon as I get the database open, I can check. Alrighty, hi, Keith, was it? Kevin, Kevin sorry. K something. <laughs> So it's thirty dollars. Alrighty. Do you um, are you a current member renewing or a new member? Renewing. renewing. Okay. Let me find you here. Thirty dollars in cash. What was your last name again? Which one? Okay. I know this is icon. May, yep. All right, we will renew you now. 10, 10, 2019. And you renewed today. All righty. Thank you. Yep. And we'll get Ed in here. Last name? Oh, um, with an H? T H O M. No, too many. S O N? M A Thomas. Oh, I'm sorry. 17 Thomases. How about first name? <laughs> Charles. Charles. Uh, yeah, you dropped in 2014. What? <laughs> Eagle Drive? Yep. yep. That is you. Okay. So 30. All right. Let me get you marked down. So now you should start getting the uh, email announcements, too. Yeah, well, I usually come with George. He usually calls me, you know, and I never th think about it. Let me right. check George. Maybe he expired and didn't get the notice, too. Yeah. He expires in uh, February. Right. Wish. Yes, you name each one of them, front door, back door, side door, and then it tells you which one is going off. Okay. Um, I've got one customer that's got a front door and a side door that can see each other, and so they both go off when someone walks up the driveway. Mm-hmm. But we're redoing our whole spectrum thing and getting rid of that stuff. We're get, trying to get rid of our landline. Yeah. But it turns out the landline goes to the alarm, yep. Or... We came the other day to give me a call on, you know, redoing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're basically buying a cell phone and a cell phone plan for the, for the doorbell. 
Yeah. Now, Ring, let me see what their deal was. $100 a year. Well, their basic plan is 30 bucks a year. Yeah, 30 bucks a year. And what do you... One year warranty. Oh, they don't monitor. So if you go up to the pro version for a hundred bucks a year, they they monitor it also. So if you and so when there's motion and you don't answer it, they'll they can call the police too. Yeah. There was also a thing on how many cameras you got. Um, yeah. So the basic the thirty dollar a year is one camera. So it's thirty dollars per year per camera. Or hundred dollars a year for any number of cameras. So if you have more than three cameras, then you're better off at a hundred bucks a year. And then for no charge, you get live video, but you don't get any storage to look back at old video. Yeah, that's why I, I um, apparently our plan we have at the office we we haven't signed up for the recording plan, so all we can do is live. Yeah. Although what's interesting is the, the boss lives so close to the office that the few times we've had a break in, she's beat the police there. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had one we had one break in and they so <laughs> It was at winter, so they left tracks. And apparently they, they, they went, there's like a little grove of woods right behind our office, and they went back there to hide because the police did show up. Um, and then the police told us to, to turn off our alarm, uh, uh, the, 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 the audible alarm, and make it a silent alarm. So then with an audible alarm, it scares the thief away. If there's no audible alarm, then the thief will, st will still be there when the police show up. So they had apparently gone to the woods to hide. Um, and um, they eventually found them. It was, it was three or four local high school kids. Uh, and they found the kids on a routine traffic stop. The kid in the back seat broke down and confessed because <laughs> he felt so guilty about it. Yeah. And it turns out, so it, it turns out they didn't know whose store it was. And they, they went to school with Jackie's kids and knew Jackie's kids. <laughs> and so, you know, she was shaming them and uh, a little bit about, and their parents. Didn't. And so they all got sentenced to um, house arrest and restitution, community service. One of the families was going on vacation, and they asked the judge to postpone the sentence until the kid got back from vacation. <laughs> Judge said no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. <laughs> yep. You um, you read about that with like the pawn shows. When they whenever they buy something from pawn, it sits there for a month or two, 
while the police wait to see if any anyone's reported it stolen. And it has happened every now and then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen that a lot. Bragging that they... Uh, address. Yep, okay, so that's working. Oh, the 30 pin, yeah. There's a 30 pin to lightning adapter. Yeah, 30 pin to lightning, yep. Probably. The last one was um, a 2018 model came out in April, May. Let me let me check. Yeah, the touch bar. Yep. Yeah, July that came out. I think so, yeah. They they start at 24. Yeah, you can max it out at almost 7. If you want that 4 terabyte drive. So, the 4 terabyte drive is $3200 more than the base model computer is by itself. address I need to use.
There we are. Um, I'm gonna go get some soda in a minute. Thank you, though. choose whether you want it mirrored like we're doing now. So I'm mirroring my screen to the second screen. Oh, that's not, okay, that's not a screen. That's, that's a space. And spaces is built into the OS too, yes. So spaces are like a virtual screen. So instead of having physical screens, you assign an app to a space or move a window to a space. If you go into mission, no, that's uh, not bad. There, at mission control, um, you can assign an, uh, an app to a space. But you can have multiple desktops. combinations are. Mission control. No, that doesn't get them there. Well, that's, that's switching apps. That isn't switching spaces. Um, let me see if it's under... Yeah, if you don't want to see the dashboard as one of your spaces, you can turn that off. Oh, mission control is swipe up with three fingers. 
So there's all my windows I have open. <laughs> so then you can jump to the one you want. No, expose um, hides all the other windows and just exposes the one you're in. Yeah, up is one gesture and down is a different one. Well, spaces, the spaces feature allows you to create multiple desktops. Three fingers left and right switches your spaces. Well, you need to log into the city school district internet, which we don't have any credentials for. Yeah. It doesn't ask for a password, but you still need to have the credentials at the other end. It's annoying. All righty. Uh, I guess we're all, uh, we're all pretty well back. Um, I guess let's start with, uh, with Dave's question about security. Uh, yes. The... What's being called the Internet of Things, 
where everything gets added um, to the internet. You got cameras, you've got doorbells, you've got um, um, thermostats and all this other stuff being added to the internet. Many companies don't give any thought to security. And there have already been examples of botnets uh, taking over uh, your DVR and using uh, you know, 500,000 DVRs to attack somebody. Um, the big name companies, uh, Ring and Nest, Honeywell, they generally do take security seriously. Um, in fact, I know, for, I know for sure Ring updates the, the firmware in the device without even you knowing about it until, until after they do it. There's an interesting conundrum in the security industry that modifying someone's computer without their consent is illegal. So for the longest time, there have been botnets. Somebody's computer gets infected and being used as a robot network to attack somebody else. The good guy researchers will see these botnets. They know how to stop them. They know what needs to be updated, but they can't do it because it's illegal. In fact, BBC uh, got into trouble a few years ago by doing a, they did a big research piece on a botnet. Um, and uh, they bought a botnet. You, go out, you can go on the eBay and buy a botnet. So they bought a 100,000 computer botnet. And when they were done with their uh, story, they put, a screen, they put a message on every screen saying, your computer's infected with a botnet. You should take it into a shop and, and get it cleaned. Uh, they got sued for modifying someone's computer without permission. So uh, the good guys can't fix the problems. <laughs> and average folk don't know they need to fix the problems. Um, and there's been a new wave recently of exploits that have been patched, uh, not, uh, patches available for a known exploit. Someone will make a botnet that uses that exploit that hasn't been patched and, and get 100,000 computers overnight um, because the owners haven't updated their device because they don't know they should, they don't know how. And so now we're seeing more, more devices coming out being called software as a service. So rather than buying an internet doorbell, you're actually, you end up buying the service from the company as well. And when you buy your router, when you buy your doorbell, when you buy your camera, there should be an option to, uh, and most people don't, but to opt in to email notices. Most people don't because they don't want to get junk mail, but then you don't get the notice as a firmware update and you need to install it. Some of the companies like Ring will actually install the updates for you um, because they're monitoring your stuff. And there, there have been a couple of, of problems. Software is never perfect. There's always going to be problems. How a company deals with the problem shows you what kind of company they are. And, uh, and Ring is one of the good ones where when a exploit is discovered in a Ring system, they uh, patch it bef uh, before they tell anyone about it. So the sort of in the security industry, general practice is if you find a problem, you tell the company about it and you give them 90 days is the usual um, uh, length, but some companies uh, want more. Um, to fix the problem before you go public. Because as soon as you go public, there's no way to know someone else hasn't already found that bug. But as soon as you go public, the bad guys know about the problem and will release uh, exploits for it. As soon as a patch comes out, we joke about Microsoft Patch Tuesday. Second Tuesday of the month, Microsoft releases updates for Windows. By Thursday, the bad guys have looked at all the patches, figured out what was wrong, and have written an exploit to take advantage of it because they know millions of people won't install the patch. And so this, this new wave of patched vulnerabilities that haven't been installed are being exploited by bad guys in the wild. So routers especially, because that's your face to the internet. Um, I just, just heard about one uh, uh, t uh, today on a Security Now show I, I was listening to. Um, what brand was it? It was a well-known brand. Yeah, Netgear has had problems, TP-Link. Um, known exploits in the router. Patches are available. People haven't installed them. Because the average person doesn't want to be a network administrator, but in essence, you are. Um, Apple releases patches. Now, <laughs> a lot of people 
don't know the little light on your airport router, when it's blinking yellow, that means there's a message it wants to tell you. Sometimes that means that the internet's broken, and you already know that because you can't get to the internet. But frequently, um, and, and with, with increasing frequency, it's an update. So th there was a problem found. Apple released an update. It's blinking at you to um, tell you there's an update. And if you've configured your computer, when you set up the router, there's an option to monitor the router for problems. And so whenever there's a problem, it will pop up on your screen. But a lot of people don't do that. So on your computer, um, if you uh, open your hard drive and open applications, and then open uh, utilities, or you can use the go menu to go right to utilities, you have an airport utility uh, near the top because it's A. And airport utility will tell you, uh, ironically, it says we're connected to the internet, because uh, we are, but not through airport. Um, it, there'll, there'll be an icon for your airport router and um, a little blinking yellow light if there's a problem, and you click on the router, and it will tell you what the problem is. And often it's firmware update available, so then you can install it. Ah. No, you can't do it automatically. So yeah, the question about putting the patch agreement, uh, uh, patch permission in the agreement. A lot of companies are doing that now. So when you set up the device and install the software for it, there's a line in there that says you agree to let us update it. The better, more reputable companies are doing that, but what we often see say is the cheap Chinese knockoffs, they're not going to bother. They're going to sell you the $40 camera uh, and be done with it. They'll never bother upgrading it, and um, there'll never be a patch to fix the, uh, the vulnerabilities. So one of the things you can do to mitigate is put your IoT stuff on your guest network. So if so the, the guest network is segregated from your main network, and the guest network generally only gets to the internet. Your guest network can't see your computers, your printers, you know, your, your other devices on your network. All they can do is the internet, which is usually what you want your internet of things, things to do. So then if one of them gets infected, it can only attack other cameras you have. It can't get into your computer, it can't get into your printer. And so that's one way to mitigate these issues. Uh, the other way is just buy the, the more reputable models and make sure they auto-update. But you kind of have to add now to your checklist, check for updates every few weeks. Sure. Oh, it, sh it should be. I turn. No, I've got a camera on here that's, yeah, second camera. Um, so we're seeing, we're seeing a, a, more of the big companies are doing auto-updates. Uh, at their end, um, many of the routers, Netgear and whatnot, you install an app to give you a, a better GUI interface to update your router and put in passwords and control, uh, um, um, parental controls. So a lot of routers now will let you time, time out. So you can say this computer that belongs to the kid um, shut off the internet access at 9 so they go to bed. So you have to install an app to do that, and that app will then keep the router up to date, or at least tell you there's an update so you can install it. Um, what we've often seen in, 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 from routers till now is you plug the router in, you, go, you type the web address, and you, you know, 192.168.1.1, and you set up your passwords yourself. So there's no automatic installation that watches for firmware, firmware updates. So more and more companies are starting to do that. Uh, and with the Apple router, all it has is a light that can blink to tell you to open airport utility. Um, and then in airport utility, uh, in fact, if you have an Apple router, you should go to airport utility and into the preferences, uh, monitor airport base stations. Make sure that's turned on. So then if there is a problem with your base station, uh, airport utility will pop open and you can see what the, the problem is, what the message is. Uh, monitor base stations. So it's... So base station is kind of a generic word for a wireless device. And so it will monitor that base station um, and will, will pop up and tell you if there's a problem. <laughs> we have, we have I, I keep trying to turn them off on our computers in the office. So every time I set up somebody's router, 
every computer in the office, all the demo computers on the show floor, airport utility pops up and says, hey, do you want to check this router? Says, no, I'm doing it back here. <laughs> so in our office, too many of them are turned on to do it, uh, which is annoying. Rick. Yeah, the, so the all, the, the, all the internet devices, uh, the listening devices can do that, the uh, Amazon device, the uh, Google device, um, the Apple device is a little more limited. Um, I, I don't want to say the name on the, because if anyone has one of these at home, I don't want to say the name and, and have their thing trigger. That's the other annoyance, is the thing triggers when it hears what it thinks on the um, online. Um, and yeah, so one of the problems we've run into, and, and there was a, uh, an interesting case uh, that um, came out a few months ago, that the device is always listening for the keyword. And when it hears the keyword, it asks what you want. So you can say, you know, Amazon, what's the weather tomorrow? And you get the weather tomorrow. One of the options it has is send a message. So I, and I'll do this sometimes when I'm driving. You know, hey, Shlomo, you know, send a message to Shirley. And then I can dictate a message, and it does. Um, there was a couple in Portland, Oregon, which they were having a conversation. And a friend of theirs called them on the phone and said, you just emailed me a recording of your conversation. What? And so Amazon, the scarier thing to me is that Amazon looked into their logs and found what had happened. <laughs> they said something that sounded like the trigger word. And so the box, maybe in another room, said what? Or what do you want? Or what can I do for you? Whatever the response is. They were just chatting. It heard send a message. And then it said who to? And they heard a name. And said, did you mean? And they heard yes. It heard yes. And then, and then it said, what do you want to say? and it started recording the conversation. <laughs> and eventually they must have paused or it heard the word done or send, so it sent it. Um, Amazon said they took steps to stop that from happening. So they can misunderstand words and trigger accidentally. So how many people have a smart home listening device? <laughs> well, you, ha you have um, uh, your iDevice can do it if you turn on Hey Shlomo. Um, by default, you have to push the button to, to, get, to get it to activate, but you can, you can turn on speaking, hey, trigger word, um, which I think is the way it should be. <laughs> so it can be listening. It listens all the time for the trigger word, and it can hear a mistake. Heaven forbid your, your name is the, the A word, because every time you say it, it will come up. So. On, on the Amazon device, there's, there's two or three words you can use. One of them is computer, and one of them is echo. But it defaults to the, a, the, 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 the name. Um, the computer is even worse, because you say computer a lot, uh, and so it can trigger. Um, but, uh, but that can be a problem. So what some enterprising people found out, um, I think it was in the Burger King ad, a while ago. Um, that they can make commercials that, yeah, April 2017, um, commercials can trigger your devices. And um, I've seen it on, on uh, BBC. I think it's an Apple paid advertisement because I don't see them doing it themselves. You know, you want to watch more of this show? Say, hey, Shlomo, you know, record Doctor Who on BBC America. And, and it does. Um, so Burger King put out an advertisement where they said in the ad um, basically what is a Burger King Whopper. And the Amazon device looked up in the, the Wikipedia entry and started reading back the Wikipedia entry for uh, the Burger King Whopper. Um, people figured that out very quickly and started editing the Wikipedia page because that's a thing you, you can publicly edit um, to make it do crazy things. 
Um, so then, um, yeah, started invading homes. People started uh, changing what the uh, what the Wikipedia page was, um, and and so Burger King had to stop the commercial lot, and they then they um, um, had to lock their page so that. Uh, it wasn't available for public editing. So it was available for public editing was one problem, <laughs> but um, so they had to give up. But we've, we've seen that quite frequently. Um, there was a classic case with the Xbox 360, uh, uh, which you can use as a media controller to play movies, play TV shows. And there was a commercial that said Xbox off. So it turned off and stopped your TV from, from playing. <laughs> So the question is basically uh, related, but the extent that a doctor speaking in an office about a patient with confidentiality and, and right, either with a patient or on the phone about a patient. Um, yes, the, the home, home uh, uh, listening appliances will listen to that because they're always waiting to hear the trigger word. Um, Amazon does have a way to go into your it's either your Amazon app or on the website, yeah, on the Amazon website, and you can see what it has recorded after the fact. Um, but you may want to, you see, that's the whole point of getting one of these devices is having the voice control. You may want to turn off the voice control um, for instances where that could be an issue. But then you got to remember to do it. So I, I'm thinking, I mean, you could say, you know, hey Amazon, you know, uh, uh, you know, shut up for an hour or quiet for an hour, um, and then it will come back on again later. But if you have one of these always listening appliances, you have to remember it's always listening, and it could potentially hear the trigger word and potentially start recording something. So that's uh, that's something you want to keep uh, keep in mind. That uh, yes, that is always listening, or at least make the trigger word more than a single word. So on, uh, with the Apple, it's two words to trigger it. Um, so it's less likely those two words will be accidentally said together. But um, so, far, so far, it's only been isolated cases in Amazon or, or, or nor Google has really done it much about it. Yep. Yeah, you may not want to have one of these recording devices in the bedroom. Um, yeah, <laughs> there have been cases of um, uh, 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 bedroom cameras or computers that were left on. Uh, you know, until you're working on your computer and you don't close the lid and, and you go to bed and you left the camera open. A lot of people put um, uh, tape over their camera so it can't record audio, can't record a video, or can't accidentally start broadcasting video. Um, but it will still do audio. You could you can put tape over the microphone and it just muffles it, but it's often still quite legible. So you got to remember we've got all these uh, cameras and recording devices around us now. On the audio, yes, there's an audio control panel where you can turn down the input gain. Um, so uh, um, if I go input right now, well right now my gain is maximum because I'm recording, I want it to be loud. But you can turn down your input gain to zero so then the audio uh, won't record. There have been proof of concept code released. If someone gets physical access to your computer or they can trick you into installing a firmware update, they can get remote control access to your camera and turn, and turn your camera on without turning the green light on. Now, theoretically, the green light is in the power flow to the camera. So the camera can't be powered on without the light powering on also. But this one, this researcher claims to have, have figured out a way around that. But it's only by rewriting your firmware, uh, which is something pretty s drastic. Um, and they would have to trick you into doing that um, or have physical access. So when you get up to refill your coffee at the coffee shop, uh, turn on your screen saver or screen lock or close your lid so it locks the screen so someone doesn't take the three minutes you're waiting in line 
uh, to install something. There's a, um, there's a scam at airports that's very common. Um, what's it called? The bump and delay. So you have a, um, a pair of people. One person goes through the, the, the security scanner and is waiting on the other side for their stuff. And the, their partner leaves something metal in their pocket. So you put all your computers and equipment on the conveyor belt and it disappears. And then they get caught caught by the metal detector and are fumbling to get the, the stuff out of their pockets. And their accomplice on the other side picks up your stuff and walks away. There's no check and balance between who puts stuff on one side and who picks up stuff on the other side. And, and I can see uh, you know, honest mistakes. Everyone has a black computer bag with a you know, silver computer in it these days. Um, so that's one, um, uh, one, one thing you might want to do to get a different color case so it doesn't look like everyone else's computer and get picked up accidentally. But then if it get, gets picked up on purpose, you can kind of see it walking away. So, and the only, you know, the only thing they could do for that would be to like put a identity tag in the bin with you and you have to have the other half of it. But then what's to stop the bad guy from keeping his identity tag and then reusing it around the other side? Yeah, it's, it's a mess. So this, so, so as secure as security is, it isn't very secure. <laughs> There are, yeah, there are smart TVs that, um, usually a smart TV means it connects to the internet, you can watch Netflix, you can watch Hulu. Some of the TVs have voice control. You know, hey TV, you know, watch, you know, Doctor Who. Um, and so the TV is listening to what you want. You, you, you say, so it can trigger. Same sort of thing with the uh, home speakers. Um, it also knows what you're watching. Someone did some research, they and can identify the show by the pixels changing on the screen. So it doesn't even need to see you know, the closed caption information or the show information. So when you hit that info button on your remote, the name of the show pops up. Um, they didn't even need that. They could just, they, they could identify the show by the way the image looked from, from reading the pixels that were going by before they hit the screen. There are some televisions that have a camera built in for video conferencing. So you can do like Skype to your, with your friends, and so the TVs have a camera. And it's, it's a computer with a camera, just, just like your computer with a camera. So the same sort of thing. We always wondered why Apple didn't put a shutter on the camera. Um, and the usual answer is, how many tech support calls would they get to have to tell people to open the shutter on the camera? And, uh, and so there are companies that will sell you little shutters so you can slide open and closed. Um, but a lot of people just use a post-it note or black tape. Fold yeah, fold a piece of cardboard and set it up there. Yeah, the original Apple EyeSight camera that w you would set on the, on the lip of the computer. In fact, I've... Yeah, there was a shutter on the original EyeSight camera. A lot of cameras now, so you know, I've got a webcam. So if, you're, if your device happens to not have a camera, or you say you've got your laptop and you're using a big, com a big screen, if you use the, the camera in the laptop, it's always looking at the side of your face. So you put another camera on the screen, Apple's uh, 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 monitors had cameras, and then uh, you can you know, point it the way you want, the way you want it to go. Or I've got a tripod for that one. Th yeah, this one doesn't have a tripod mount, but that one did. Um, so it's it's an issue when you start putting cameras and microphones in all your devices. Uh, your your cell phone is a spy device. It's a camera, a microphone, and a GPS. And uh, you see all the TV shows about um, s good guys and bad guys. You know, pinging the phone, finding where you are. Uh, turning it on when it's off, I, I don't believe, um, especially if you take the battery out. That's, and that's, every now and then they'll make that joke in the show. Um, someone will, will smash the phone and throw it out the window. I just bought that phone. Um, all you got to do is take the battery out. Then it, it can't possibly work. <laughs> and then you don't have to smash the phone. Um, take the SIM card out, and it almost can't work. Um, except with the Apple, uh, app, an Apple phone, and even with Android phones, um, 
if you're in Wi-Fi range. So the SIM card is only for cellular. So you take the SIM card out, there's no cellular access, but if you're in Wi-Fi range, everything still works. You can even make phone calls over Wi-Fi with most carriers. So if you're really concerned about it, you buy a, um, uh, a foil bag called a Faraday cage <laughs> and put your devices in them when you, uh, when you want. Uh, a lot of people that travel will do the same thing with their passports. Um, your passport has an RFID tag in it that uh, um, immigration reads when, when they look at your passport. Um, it's theoretically possible someone close enough to you can read the data off your, uh, your RFID tag. So a lot of people will put their passports in a, um, a Faraday cage. We're even seeing um, a wallets now. The credit card holder in the wallet has a metal lining to, to, to block anyone from trying to read your chip. Um, the chips and even the phones now with, uh, with Apple Pay, they use something called Near Field Communications, NFC. Um, it's supposed to be, yeah, a little, a little metal credit card case to hold it in. Um, there have been, there've been uh, videos online about someone who walks, has a scanner, walks up behind someone um, and holds the scanner next to their back pocket with their, their uh, wallet in it and, and reads a credit card. So you, you might want to get little uh, Faraday cages. The near field communication is supposed to be less than a centimeter, um, but most of the time that's because there's not a big antenna in the phone. Um, but if you have a receiver with a really big antenna, <laughs> it can pick up the really tiny signal in your phone. So one of the th nice things with Apple Pay is it won't actually activate until you put your fingerprint on it. So even if they do manage to, to trigger the NFC reader, you still have to put your fingerprint on it. So if, you're, if your phone pops up and wants your fingerprint and you didn't do anything, don't put your fingerprint on it. <laughs> Well, yeah, you can not use Apple Pay, but you still have the chip cards in your wallet also. So I, I, I've taken to carry my wallet in my front pocket. So it's, well, I shouldn't say that on the, on the internet. Um, so it's a, little harder, it's a little harder to pick my front pocket than it is my back pocket and, and to wave a scanner next to my front pocket. Was that, was that your question, Barb? Yeah. Apple Pay itself is very secure. Um, you register your credit card with the Apple Pay service. And, uh, and I just, Canada National finally got Apple Pay, um, so I was able to set mine up. Um, you have to go through this verification process with a third-party vendor. I didn't like that part. I don't know who they are, but my screen says you're going to get a phone call from this company, and then you, you, know, you, you, you have a code number, they have a code number, and you verify it's really them calling. Um, and then when you go to make a payment, um, the Apple Pay software in your phone sends a basically a one-time credit card number. It never sends your real credit card number. And then the receiver um, checks that number against the Apple Pay services and verifies the sale. So they never get your real credit card number. So it's not like um, uh, someone writing down your credit card number could get it or in the olden days of, of um, carbon copy receipts, it was a big issue with people just going into the dumpster behind the restaurant and getting all the receipts out of it. Uh, and then we had to stop using carbon paper. And then we had, had to stop putting the credit card number on the receipt. Um, but in general, it's very, very secure. I, I find it a little annoying because I can't put my Wegmans card in it. So I've got to get my wallet. So the, so the advantage is you've got your phone in your hand probably anyway, so you just you put it near the reader and you pay. But I've got to get my Wegmans card out and scan that, and I'm already in my wallet. I might as well use my credit card. So it is a little, little more secure because it sends a one-time number, um, but I want to figure out how to get my Wegmans card in because Because Apple Pay can take reward cards. Um, I haven't tried Wegmans lately. Maybe they take it now. They do? Thank you. I'll have to go home and try that. Um, so then, then you can use your phone for, uh, for everything. I, I just read about that. Um, let me see if I can find it. Was it Super Micro? Was that the name of it? Yeah. So there has been a concern for years. Um, virtually every 
electronic device is manufactured in one company in Shenzhen, China. Um, ironically, by a Taiwanese company called Foxconn. <laughs> Uh, and so they build their stuff in China. About, uh, um, um, a, mil yeah, a million people work in this uh, building. Um, there's another one they, they built in Brazil. Uh, a million people work there. A lot of people complain, why, why aren't things made in America? Um, we couldn't find a city to build a manufacturing plant that we could have a million people work at. Uh, there have been some interesting stories about this Foxconn plant. Um, every morning, about 20,000 people show up for work, and they all get a job. Because every day, about 20,000 people quit at the, at the, come out the other end. Um, they have a million people working there. Very low percentage, actually. Yeah. Well, and, and there was a concern a few years ago about suicides. A lot, of, a lot of very, very poor people from the very rural areas were coming to the plant to work. Um, and the you know, th say they make $100 a month. And that's a fortune. That's upper middle class to the, you know, to, to the Chinese rural communities, um, and a lot a lot of people send half their money home because part of part of the company is uh, you room and board and meals, and that, so there was a big complaint about um, uh, they make you stay in the, in the dormitories. Well, no, you get room and board and meals for like a buck a day. Um, uh, uh, um, you get your room and three meals a day for 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 a buck a day. Um, and they send half their money home. But the company, a, a lot of times at Apple's uh, urging, are, are raising wages, are getting better working conditions. And it's not just Apple, it's every electronic company stuff is made in this, in this plant. Um, but there was, there was a concern a few years ago that there were a lot of suicides because they, the company had such good benefits um, the death benefit for, uh, for a worker was really high. So if you committed suicide, especially if you're like the third or fourth child, if you commit suicide, your family gets a ton of money. So the company put up nets around the building to catch people who, who, who might be trying to jump off the building to commit suicide. And then the statistic came out that the national average in China for suicides is 35 per million. In the worst year at this plant, there were only 30 suicides. So it's actually lower than average. But you hear about 30 suicides at one company. That's terrible. There's a million people working there. So there's been this concern for years because all of this stuff is made in China. Um, the company or the Chinese government or you know spy agencies could introduce their own little bits of code or their own secret chips on your stuff. Um, and there was a story that came out a few a few days ago. Um, I think Bloomberg uh, started the report, but a lot of companies are starting to to report about it now. Um, and experts are casting doubt on, uh, on the research and the quotes, but this, this story from Bloomberg says that for years now, this company um, has been inserting their own chips in all electronic devices so the government, Chinese government could spy on you. Um, there, there was a, 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 a directive from the DOD a few, uh, few months ago um, Kaspersky is a very well-regarded antivirus company. Eugene Kaspersky just happens to be Russian. So the DOD uh, said no one can run any Kaspersky software on their, on their computers. And so the Russian government said, all right, nobody can run McAfee or Symantec on our computers. And so the only thing that happened is a lot of companies lost a lot of money. Um, and so we're seeing this weird thing happen. Um, we don't know everything yet. Apple stopped using that company as a supplier uh, a couple years ago for unrelated uh, reasons, um, they've said. And we still don't know what exactly is happening, so we've got to wait for more, more research uh, to be done. And Bloomberg apparently hasn't released the documents for the rest of the security uh, industry to, uh, to look over and vet. Um, was it something that they were trying to do? Was it something they did? In fact, how many people have heard about the uh, reverse your PIN number in an ATM? If you, if you type your PIN number in backwards, it calls the police. That was proposed about 20 years ago, but it never caught on. Um, because a lot of, how many people have a palindromic PIN number? 
that reads the same forward as backwards. So if that, were, if, if that system was implemented, you could never have uh, a pin that was a palindrome. Um, and what if you mistyped your pin as, a palind as your pin backwards, um, and then the police show up as you're, as you're really typing it? So the idea was that you're at the ATM um, to get cash, and a burglar comes up behind you and, and makes you withdraw all your money and, and give it to them. Part of that now is limited by, you know, what, $200 daily or $300 daily limit, so you can't lose too much money. Uh, and all the ATMs have cameras on them. <laughs> so you just lean aside <laughs> and let it um, get a picture of the person behind you. But, um, yeah, we, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, what was this report uh, yesterday? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Apple and Google said it, it isn't in any of their stuff. And I'm sure Apple has people watching the assembly line. And, you know, Johnny Ive is probably down there to make sure everything is done perfectly. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's been now 13 hours ago. U.S. senators are demanding answers. And are we going to stop buying things uh, that are made in China? Well, everything you have is made in China. <laughs> Um, I haven't heard wait. So while they're assembling something, it, it makes sense. While they're assembling a thing, there's cameras, depending on what's being made. You've got robots picking and putting pieces in. Um, you've got cameras watching that the robots put them in the right place or the person put them in the right place. Um, I could easily see them adding a wait feature so that, you know, it's got a way right at the end of the, of the uh, assembly line so that they know all the pieces got put in properly. But it would have to be a very... Um, a sensitive scale to to catch some of the tiny screws, especially in a phone. Some of those screws are so darn tiny, a millimeter long, and, <laughs> and you can't see them when you when you pull them out. You try to unscrew it, and it gets sucked into the um, uh, micro uh, uh, the speaker magnet. Yeah. So there are there are problem there have been problems for a while with with ATMs and like gas station credit card readers called skimmers. The bad guy will make a overlay they put on the card reader. So you put your card into the slot and you're going through the bad guy's reader who then gets your all your credit card information and they often have a camera on it to watch you type your pin. Um and so that has been a problem for a long time. There are similar problems um, with rogue Wi-Fi. So if you ever, you know, ever pull down your Wi-Fi menu and you'll, you'll see all the different Wi-Fi areas, um, I get a kick out of someone that names their Wi-Fi network FBI surveillance van. Uh, but there's a problem with, with people will create something called free Wi-Fi or free internet. And, you know, you're at a... You know, coffee shop or bust and go, oh, free Wi-Fi, and you join it. And that you don't know it's the bad guy sitting at the next table that can now read almost everything that goes through your computer. Um, which is why when you're on a website, so when I'm on CNBC, there's no little padlock. So everything I do can be seen by virtually everyone else on the network. But if I go to another page, um, yeah, here our Apple Cider page, there's a little padlock. So the data is encrypted on my computer, sent over the internet, and decrypted on the other end. So even if someone is sniffing my traffic, all they get is encrypted noise. They can't read what's going on. So whenever you do something with money, Amazon, your bank, you know, PayPal, eBay, um, make sure there's a padlock. And in fact, many browsers, and Google is, is pushing this, you may have seen in the past, if you go to a page that you might get an error message about elements of this page are insecure and, and will give you a warning. Uh, Google Chrome will now warn you that a page is not secure. So every page you go to that is not encrypted, you'll get a warning message. This page is not encrypted. We're afraid that's going to teach people to just click OK, OK, OK. As, as much as they already do, 
not bother to read the message and just click OK, OK, OK. Um, when you go to the fake PayPal, you know, P-A-Y-P-A-1, um, you don't see the message says this is not, you know, PayPal, it's, you know, P-A-Y-P-A-1, and you just click OK, just give me it, you know, let me in. So that has been an issue for a while. Uh, you need to keep track of, of the little padlock that when you go somewhere, there's, there's a little padlock, uh, and you want it to be um, secure by your computer so that no one in the middle um, can sniff the traffic. We call that a man in the middle. So in addition to ATM skimmers, uh, there are fake Wi-Fi um, hotspots. There are fake cell towers called um, uh, stingers. So the data on your phone is encrypted over the cellular network to the cell tower, but there can be a malicious cell tower in the middle. And your phone is, is designed to join the strongest signal. So if there's a guy sitting at the next table in the coffee shop that has a little microcell, your phone will join him. So still make sure you've got that little padlock in your, uh, in your URL before you, uh, you, you do anything. Sometimes, so, oh wait, this, huh, this is supposed to be but there's no padlock. So all your website traffic <clears throat> has been HTTP colon slash slash something, something, something. Hypertext transfer protocol. We've gotten out of the habit of typing that, and so we just type www.apple.com or apple.com. If you do HTTPS, that will try to load a secure page. But the other end has to have created the security at their end um, in order to, to make that page secure. And this is interesting that CNBC, I'm at HTTPS, but there's no padlock. Um, so that there's something wrong in their security. But uh, if we go to CIDR, and if you click on that uh, icon, it will sh let you see the security certificate. The problem is most people don't know how to read certi security certificates, and it doesn't really mean anything to them anyway. Um, there are some very large, well-known certificate authorities, um, and one of them is Let's Encrypt, and they now offer free security certificates. So you can encrypt the data on your website, and that's what CIDR uses because it's free. It used to be thousands of dollars a year to get a security certificate. Um, I don't remember. Pardon? Yeah, no, I don't think they're in China. Uh, let's... Uh, Let's, uh, oops, let's see. No, that's not what I wanted. Um, which window? This window. Okay. Let's encrypt. Um, and in fact, one of the problems, uh, Semantic used to be a very large security certificate issuer, a certificate authority they're called, because they bought VeriSign, which was one of the first security certificate installers. Um, Semantic was issuing certificates erroneously. They were I issuing certificates that other people were signing erroneously. And so the, the certificate uh, forum, what is it, the CAB forum, uh, certificate authority business, I forget what it is. The, the people that are, that are in charge of security certificates um, are censoring Semantic. All the web browsers have stopped trusting semantic certificates because you don't know which ones are good and which ones are bad. And um, semantic had to stop selling certificates and the DigiCert is now taking over uh, their business. Um, so DigiCert is, is one of the big uh, certificate companies. Um, so, so Let's Encrypt is the security research group. Let's see um, where they happen to be, probably California. Uh, San Francisco, yep. Yeah. One of the jokes we've said for years is that the Hong Kong Post Office is a certificate authority. And so someone could buy a certificate from the Hong Kong co Post Office and it would show up in your uh, browser as secure. Well, the Hong Kong Post Office is owned by the Chinese government. So there, there, there is no doubt that government agencies ha own certificate authorities or they or they have agreements with certificate authorities um, part of the certificate is um, what's called the hash 
And can it, will it show me the hash? Uh, how many bits is this? So right now we're doing we're we're up to yeah. So SHA two fifty six, we're doing a two fifty six bit hash, um, and theoretically, it will take longer than the age of the universe to break a SHA two fifty six certificate. Um, most of the industry is moving away from SHA one twenty eight um, because that has been weakened. Um, it's, uh, it hasn't been broken yet, but, it, but it's at least been weakened. And um, somewhere in there you can see the 256-bit hash, but you don't really need to, uh, to worry about it. Uh, there was a, a company, what was the name of it? Um, it was a secure email company. And um, the FBI gave them a, um, uh, was, got a judge to order them to turn over their security key so they could read the, the encrypted email for a suspect. If they turn over the security key, the FBI can read all email for all of their customers. And so they were fighting it for, for you know, a long time um, until it, it finally came down to, no, you have to do it. So, so they printed it in one point type, and it was like 100 pages long. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and so the FBI said, what? And then went back to the judge, and the judge made them give it to them on, um, on a, uh, on a um, uh, CD or thumb drive. And then the guy shut his company down. Deleted all the data, shut the company down, because I can't guarantee security anymore. So the FBI has the security key. Uh, if you have any email stored, it's vulnerable. Yeah. I've got a couple of things I wanted to uh, to show too. So, in addition to the, um, let me just start closing these windows till I find the one I want. In addition to the ra the doorbells, we're seeing a new class of um, stuff. No, oh, it's not there. Um, did I put it in another window? A uh, home automation, and. You can add, as we were saying, doorbells and security cameras and um, thermostats. There it is. To your network. Um, so this is this, these are the security cameras in my office, and I've got a little padlock, so I know it's uh, it's encrypted. Although this is a, it's not a, it's a self-signed certificate. So this company signed their own cert. So. Self-signed certificates are normally bad. You don't want to accept them. But I know this company, and I know I'm going there, so this is OK. Um, we have a camera. Let's see, I'm, let's see if this will work, because I've got so much video running. Um, video in and video out. There we are. Apple has created a system called Home. And your home is a single app on your phone that can control all your devices, all your internet devices. And so we have a device. Um, and I am going to tap my device. And in a moment or three, we should see the light come on. So, so you can get a, a wall socket that you can plug your existing lamp into. Any, anyone remember um, the appliance timers when you went on vacation, you'd have your lights turned on and off? Well, this takes this to another step where you control it with your phone. Oh, there the light came on. So the, delay, the, the video stream is a little delayed. So now that the light came on, the camera, which just got overwhelmed by its night mode, had to switch back into, into day mode. So now it can, uh, it can uh, show the picture again. Um, so. You can buy, and, and we sell the EVE devices, um, you can buy a plug that will let you plug in any existing lamp. You can get a light bulb that has Wi-Fi in the light bulb, so you can control the light bulb itself. Um, we have one um, that's not, not plugged in at the moment. Um, it's an LED bulb, and so you can make it change colors. And there's a system where you can tie it to the audio of, the, of your television. so. In a dark, you know, dark, scary scene, the lights will dim. Uh, you know, a thunderstorm, there'll be, you know, that th will flash, uh, flash at you when there's a lightning. So it's they've done some really cool things with it. Uh, we also have a um, um, 
Where is it? No, we don't have it turned on. We have a carbon monoxide detector, um, uh, air quality detector, so and everything and it's a little hard to see uh, um, here. Uh, everything shows up in the home app on your phone. So you may have noticed this icon that says home, and that's where you add all these home capable um, programs. There used to be three or four different um, competing technologies for, uh, for home. Um, and Apple is kind of trying to build this, this umbrella so that all the different companies um, can um, come up with, oops, now which, uh, which window am I supposed to be in here, um, can, uh, can come up with uh, um, compatible devices by having an umbrella uh, option. Home. Well, Apple themselves don't make anything. Um, they, I'm going to go back and. Yeah, Apple supplies the interface and they supply the protocols so that um, when you, uh, there we go, page not found, this one. Um, and it's, it's home devices. When you, um, Add a home device, so we, we've got the Elgato Eve, we've got Philips Hue, um, is uh, one of the light bulb companies. They make a lot of the um, uh, light, uh, come, here we go, set up in home, the home app. Home kit, that's what it is. Um, and as, as a device developer, you, you create the home kit uh, calls so that your device can be accessed by home kit. And now with iOS 12 and Siri shortcuts, um, uh, we have one called closing time, so it can lock the doors, it can turn on the alarm, it can uh, uh, turn off the lights, and so by having one command, you can chain all these things together, so it all, all happens with one command. So you want to see on devices you buy, uh, works with HomeKit. Uh, so it'll have that badge on it so that it will work together with your other HomeKit devices. And most of the things are HomeKit um, uh, ready now. If you got into the home automation stuff um, earlier, then you have to have a Philips hub, you had to have a Nest hub, and so all these separate devices are now being linked together uh, with HomeKit. And on Apple's website, they have uh, lists of known accessible uh, and functional devices. Um, so I devices, I home devices, <laughs> cool geek. So the question is about adding your device to the home app. Does that add the security? Uh, uh, short answer is no. The device is still on the internet. Your HomeKit app is controlling it, but the device itself is still on the internet. The, the, the device itself needs to be updated periodically as well. Um, these nano leaf panels are, are pretty cool. Um, you buy these little triangular panels, and you buy as many as you want to build um, a lighting array. So you can have um, uh, pretty much a custom set light, and each panel can be a different color. And you can have them oscillate through different colors if you want, including, uh, including just plain white. So this is one thing a lot of people use for um, um, music and uh, TV. So it listens to the music and, uh, and will play in the beat of the music. So when you have those wild parties, you can have your lights uh, blinking at you as well. Uh, let's see what they say. Um, so nine panels for 200 bucks, 15 panels for three, uh, where is the size of them? Or a person standing in front of them to get, yeah. Let's see how big is nano leaf, leaf panel? Uh, technical specifications. Nano leaf. There's lumens, wattage. No, those are light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs panels. There we are. 
250 units. <laughs> um, probably millimeters, yeah. Yeah, 20, 24 centimeters. Uh, so that's 10 inches ish, like nine inches maybe, 25 centimeters and, uh, yeah, 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 25 millimeters and an inch. So that's a neat way to, uh, to put up different lights. And they have smart light bulbs, uh, or you can get smart light sockets. Uh, we're now also seeing um, uh, smart switches. So you can replace the switch in your house with a smart switch that you control with your phone. Although uh, one, of the, one of the reviewers said he likes to get the ones that have a physical switch too. So the wife doesn't come along and, um, and turn the switch on the device. Oh, click, click, click. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And then leave it off. So if you have a physical switch and an electronic switch all, in, all together, so you can physically turn it on and then electronically turn it off. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's kind of neat. So on a Apple's website under HomeKit, um, they um, have a list of all the, all the different, well, many of the different devices. I wouldn't want to say all. Um, front door locks are an interesting thing. Uh, Amazon had a uh, kit they put together where it was an electronic lock with the idea that when the Amazon delivery person came with your box, they had a machine that said, I'm here. Um, the door would unlock and there's a camera inside looking at the door. The person could, could go in your house, leave the package, leave the, the house, and, the, and lock the door behind. The door would lock behind them. Um, in about a day, somebody figured out how to um, hack it so they could loop the video. Like you see in all the, all the movies, they loop the video. Um, and so they can, they can uh, uh, open the door and rummage through your house and, and without, without seeing it. And what we're seeing... Amazon is hiring delivery people like Uber and Lyft. So it's not UPS and FedEx. It's some guy that happened to sign up to be an Amazon delivery person. Um, but how, how well are UPS and FedEx delivery people vetted anyway? In fact, they're all contractors too. UPS, you know, it's, it's, they're both contracting companies. Um, they don't actually hire people, they sell franchises. Um, but it does seem a little iffier. So then Amazon did a, a trunk delivery. So you can get a lock for your trunk. So someone can deliver a package to you at work and put it in your trunk instead of coming into your office and saying, I have a package for this person. <laughs> um, so we're a little worried about uh, some of the uh, door locks. But uh, bad guy just breaks your window and unlocks the door anyway. But he'd be caught on your ring camera with you and your ring floodlight cam and, and uh, uh, be before they got close enough to smash and grab. So somebody sent you something on Amazon, you weren't expecting it, and a, and a plain clothes delivery person showed up. I sometimes get a kick out of, what, would it turn out to be something you wanted, or? <coughs> oh, it was, a, it was a gift, yep, so that was nice. Yeah, it wasn't ticking. Um, I get a kick out of some of the delivery people that say a uniformed courier will hand deliver the package to your house. Um, the postman has a uniform. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's call it a night. Um, so this coming Saturday, uh, the 13th, about 1 p.m., we'll be meeting at Bob's house. Uh, not only green apples, but it's, it's hands-on, basic questions. Uh, about 3 p.m., uh, I get there after uh, sound bites, and uh, we, uh, we do more, uh, more Q&A till about 5. Next Wednesday is our board meeting at the Arundel United Church of Christ. If you're interested um, in how the club runs, you can come and uh, and visit the board. Although if you visit, you might get uh, appointed to the board. <laughs> uh, next meeting is November 14th. Oh, I forgot to put it on there. Adam Engst is. Um, uh, we're going to do a video chat with uh, with Adam, um, and uh, so that will be on November 14th. Location to be discovered. Yeah, probably in this building somewhere. We don't know if it'll be, yeah. All right.
thank you for coming, and uh, we're going to uh, shut down and see you all. I'll see you all next month. Uh, yeah, po power, and then I think it says power again. And I will stop the stream and stop the record. Thank you. Thank you.